I'm starting with a minute disadvantage here. I had to uh, adjust my webcam real quick. But we're good to go now. Let's play a Night Orf against Anur Guy. I don't think I've played this player before. Stream looking good. Greetings to everyone on Twitch as well as YouTube. Oh, yeah. I see you, YouTube viewers there. Hello, Pipjoy. What's up, Ahmad? Let's play E6 here. Good afternoon to Talha as well. Peter Grayling. All right, Bishop E7. Yeah, I think this is kind of an older line that White is playing. Um, you got to watch out for a Bishop takes E6 idea in this variation. So, for example, if I play Knight BD7 here, I think this could be played. So uh, I, I believe I want to avoid that. I'll show that line after the game. Hello, Cranky Monkey, as well as Two Sin, a youthful porpoise. Greetings, Blunder Champ. Yes, thank you, Blunder Champ. Yeah, I did get my hair cut this past week. So this is one way to handle it. You still develop the night out, but you keep a keen eye on the E6 point. I just do not want White to sacrifice there. And I know this setup looks a little passive, but this is like utterly standard for the Sicilian. And with the two center pawns against one, Black hopes that in the long run, that should prove some sort of advantage. So... Uh, so much so that I might be going knight e5 here, but first let's play b5, and I, I think I'm going to send the knight into c4 if allowed. Hello, Caitlin Koala. Good to see you. Ah, uh, you like it, Cranky Monkey? I changed the board theme up right before I went live. I was like, you know what? Let's just switch it up today. <laughs> Why not? Hello, Tactical Bert. B. Wackles. Greetings. All right, uh, let's play knight c4. So I'll continue with the plan. Again, I'm behind on the clock, so I want to uh, try to apply some pressure to the white position, maybe get my opponent to think, or ideally make a mistake. That would be great. It is a beautiful day here. I might even open my, uh, my door soon to get some, some air. But gorgeous, gorgeous day. Should I do the standard Sicilian sacrifice? Let's do it. A good rule of thumb on the Sicilian. So this exchange sack, Rook for Knight on C3, is very, very common. Good rule of thumb is if you can win one of the center pawns in the process while also creating double isolated pawns here. Black usually has quite good compensation. And I think in this case, I'm just going to outright win the C pawn. So material-wise, I won't even be down. I will have... A minor piece and two pawns for the rook. So let's tell my opponent hello. Yeah, and this is exactly what's happening. And I think black should be somewhat better here because my structure is, is quite solid. I have the two bishops. White has lingering weaknesses on a3 and c2. So if you play the Sicilian defense, that's definitely a sacrifice you want to get acquainted with if you're not already. Let's play d5 here. Now watch out for bishop g5. Bishop g5 is in the mix. I'm going to go here first, though. Don't really want to trade. However, I see now I can win this pawn. Uh, so maybe I can go for that. Yeah, you know, that looks pretty good. Let's, let's do that. And I'm thinking if here... Okay. Well, hold on. Take, take, take. Yeah, let's do this. And I guess I'm going to pull this all the way back. And then I'm going to unfurl my structure, e5. I maybe could have played that in more forcing fashion. I'm not 100% sure. Um, this looks pretty good, though. So I like this. I don't like my time situation, though. That time I spent in the opening is costing me. <laughs> this position looks darn near winning, though. Play g5. Maybe bishop b4 next, like this. Looking good. Probably bring this up next. I think my king should be pretty safe here. Take that. Bring the king over. Oh, I'm sweating this lead chess plays. <laughs> I 
I'm winning all the pawns. Oh, good game, under guy. You almost gave me a heart attack in the first game. Very good game. Yes, GG. Let's see what the engine has to say about that exchange sack. I think it's going to be pretty good. You know, generally, if white's play stalls out in these same side castling situations, then black's doing very well. Hence why you see a lot of the critical lines of the Sicilian um, involving opposite side castling, white, white going on the queen side. So let's just see if the engine approves of what I did here. Ah, <laughs> it points out I could have just played knight takes e4. I didn't even think about that. Although in fairness, rook takes c3 is not that far behind. So... Yeah, the engine believes black is uh, pretty much winning here. Minus four. But, you know, it proved a little tricky, and I think my opponent did a good job of creating counterplay. I couldn't quite calculate here if I had some win if I take this one. Like, take here, take here, take here, this. Looks winning. Just bring it over. King, king over. But, um, yeah, honor guy created some nice counterplay. Almost saved the game. Oh, and just to show in the opening what I'm talking about, so... Let's say here, I were to play knight bd7. You lay out the red carpet for, for white to play this move. Bishop takes e6. Very common sacrifice in this Sozin Sicilian, this Sozin variation that white is playing with bishop c4. That was the old Bobby Fischer favorite. And if take, take, hits the queen, hits this pawn, uh, white's going to pick that pawn up on g7 after the queen moves. They'll pick that up with check. And then back the knight out, they're going to have three pawns and a very open king to work with, a very open black king. 